Hey there, Derek Rydell here, founder of The Law of Emergence and author of the best-selling books, Emergence and the Abundance Project. And I'm talking today about what, what appears to be another controversial subject, which seems to be something I'm doing a lot of lately in this crazy upside down, inside out, through the looking glass world that we're living in. And that is that you have no human rights, but you have something much better. And I just want to help, I guess I want to call this the Thinking Clearly series. And it's really important because very few people have been taught to think. We mostly regurgitate and react and recapitulate. We are often driven by patterns unconsciously and we are very susceptible then to beliefs and to falling prey to hypnotic patterns and we think we're in reality, but we're really in a simulation. And this whole idea of rights, I wanna help you understand the difference between what is a right, what is a principle, what is a privilege, what is a law? And we hear often all of these things touted about, uh, you know, healthcare is a, is a right, housing is a right, and certain things are rights. And, and I want to be very clear, I'm not saying that we don't want to create a world where everybody has everything that they need to thrive. I want to be very clear about that. that, that when you understand the principles that I'm going to talk about, you understand why you would want such a world, why you would want a world, not merely from an emotional, sympathetic perspective, which is often not helpful but from an understanding of how things actually work, right? If, if you're trying to get electricity in your house and you're not getting electricity, you can't bemoan the world and say, well, I have a right to electricity. You don't have a right to any electricity, but there are principles <clears throat> that when you understand them and you build a house accordingly, it produces a result. And all of nature is based on principle. Human nature is a part of nature. It's a part of the universe. It's a part of universal principles, a universe of laws. I don't mean laws made up by human beings, not, but, a, but a universe of, of universal or spiritual mathematical laws. And when you understand the laws and the principles of life and you live in accordance with them, life works. Nobody is giving you a right Nobody can give you a right, and you can't demand a right, but you can understand a principle and live according to a principle, and as a byproduct of that, you produce better results. So a seed, the acorn doesn't have a right to become an oak tree. Nothing in nature has any right to be anything, but when it lives in accordance to principles, when the acorn is planted in the soil and the conditions are cultivated in a way that is harmonious with that seed pattern, which nature does automatically, what do you get? The acorn fulfills its potential. The acorn becomes an oak tree. Apple seed becomes an apple tree. And, and when nature is allowed to organize itself according to principles, which again it does with, on its own without our help, unless we get in the way of it, it produces harmony, abundance, an ecosystem that works. And this is why the greatest philosophers and the greatest spiritual leaders or teachers or mystics never came along and said, you have rights. They didn't say that. They said, there are principles to living rightly. Okay? Jesus didn't say, you have a right to be treated a certain way. Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of heaven within you. Make a connection to your own divine sovereignty. Remember who you are. You are not what you've been told. You are something so much more. Follow this principle. Follow the practice that aligns you with the principle and you will reclaim your sovereignty. You will reclaim your agency. You will take the locus of control back where it belongs, which is within you. And then he said, and now here's another principle do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He didn't say, 
you have a right to be treated a certain way. He said, if you treat yourself a certain way, you will experience a certain life. And if you treat others a certain way, you will experience, again, a beneficial, harmonious life. He did not come along and say, you have rights. That you have a right to a home or a right to health care or a right to anything. Not even a right to freedom. He didn't even come along, and which is what they thought he was going to do. That's why they were so angry at him, because they thought he was going to be a, an earthly king that was going to fight for their rights, free them from slavery and oppression of the Roman rule and all this stuff. And he's like, no, 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 no. My kingdom is not of this world. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to teach you the principles of proper living. Buddha, same thing. Lao Tzu, same thing. Krishna, same thing. The greatest spiritual teachers, really the greatest thought leaders and influencers, did not come along and say, you have rights. They said, check it out. There are principles. When you live in a certain way, you reclaim your divine sovereignty. You reclaim your connection to source, otherwise known as resourcefulness, and you're able to produce results. And then if you want to live in harmony within others, Here's the principles to live in harmony with others. Do unto others, the golden rule, all of that, love, forgiveness, not rights, principles, and practices to live in alignment with universal principles. And that will produce a life of freedom and fulfillment and riches, even in the midst of a world at the time where there were not the same level of civil or human rights that we have now. Now, the difference is when we have, as we've evolved into a society of, of social engineering and creating societies, what, what was the breakthrough of the founding fathers of the United States of America? And I'm speaking about this because, again, the craziness that's ensuing right now on the left and the right and all over the place and rioting and looting and protesting is the missing piece is an understanding of this deep wisdom that nobody is actually guaranteed rights. Life is not fair. Life is not, life doesn't, is not fair. It's lawful. It's principled. And that's why, by the way, even the most oppressed among us have risen above that oppression. Nelson Mandela imprisoned unfairly for 20 some years, rose above it, not because anybody gave him a right, but because he reclaimed his power. He followed principles. He realized and remembered who he really was, what he was made of and made for, and where he was coming from. And he rose above and defied all of the human laws of the day to become the president and end apartheid not because anybody gave him any right, but because he reclaimed his divine sovereignty. He reclaimed his agency. He practiced principles. And then he practiced principles of love thy neighbor and forgiveness, creating forgiveness tribunals. Again, nobody made him. He understood the principles of proper living, not principles made up by a human being and certainly not made up by a man and certainly not made up by a white man but universal principles. And as a result, he created more freedom, more healing for many, many people. Same with Gandhi. And same with the work of Buddha, and again, great masters and great teachers and great philosophers. The founding fathers came along and understood principles. And then what they did is endeavor to produce a body of laws and a body of rights that were in alignment with universal principles. They didn't do it perfectly. It's the most, it's the best imperfect rendition to date. And it created a great promise, a set of principles that we have yet to live into, which is just human nature. But what I want to in invite you, especially you that are thought leaders and influencers and change makers and or aspiring to be is not to get caught in the tides and the trends of the times, not to get pulled by the highly emotionally charged and even well-intentioned mob mentality on 
in, in any political circle or any social circle that says, that, that, is, that is screaming out and demanding certain rights. Again, I'm not saying that if there are laws that they should not be followed and honored and there are consequences to not honoring even laws created by human beings. But we know full well that many, many laws are, are, are flawed. And, but if you look at the individuals that were able to overcome the human law and create an evolution in human experience, whether it was Rosa Parks choosing to sit at the front of the bus, not because she was demanding anybody give her anything, but because she was claiming it and claiming it nonviolently. If you have to use violence, you are often in a state of entitlement or victimhood or trauma or wounding. And again, it's based on this illusion that I should get something, that I demand something, that I'm owed something. And there is no such principle. Yes, there is a principle that you are divine, that you are made from the one unique expression of life and endowed with you know, indelible qualities and all of the qualities of life and power and liberty is the truth about you. But ultimately, as we can see, even if you're given those rights, if you're not claiming and living in accordance with those principles, you will not manifest that the benefits of that, right? People can be given a lot of money. If they're not living in accordance with principles, not only will they go broke again, but they often ruin their lives. People are given lots of freedoms, but not only if they don't understand the principles, will those freedoms not help them prosper, but it will actually cause them to ruin their lives. Do you understand? Two people can be given the same rights. One person thrives and one person destroys themselves or others. Why? Because one is living more in accordance with a principle and one is not. It's not personal, it's principle. And that doesn't mean that we don't stand in principle, that we don't absolutely commit ourselves to living in principle, both sovereignty and unity and community until ultimately there's common unity. But these are principles, they're not rights. When you look at what people are really saying when they're demanding rights, is that it's a story of victimhood, of pain, of, of trauma, of, of woundology. And, and there's, in some way they've been caught by an ego pattern. And it actually hurts them. It doesn't help them. And if you enable that, you just prolong the day when they will actually have the strength and perhaps the courage to reclaim their own power. And this is what's going on for everybody. No matter who you are, color, creed, race, gender, the, the biggest problem and the greatest solution is our coming back to first principles. To first principles. And that is actually seeking to understand how does life really operate? What is behind the greatest expression of health and wealth and well-being, love, companionship, community, sovereignty, and unity? What are the principles that produce a great community? What are the principles that produce a great individual life? What are the principles that produce great success because a principle doesn't know your age, it doesn't know your color, it doesn't know your race, your gender, your religion, your sexual preference. If you plant a seed and you operate according to the law of emergence, that seed can't say, well, I'd love to grow you, but you're toxic masculinity, or you're a black person, or you're a woman, or you're over the age of 50, or you're too young, or you're gay, or you're straight, or you're too, you, you're too fat, or you're too skinny. It doesn't know any of that. If you align with the principle, it works. If you learn the laws of buoyancy and you align your body to the laws of buoyancy, it doesn't care what your race, gender, culture, creed, and it doesn't care what your history is. It doesn't care if you've been enslaved for a thousand years or if you've been free for a thousand years. If you don't do it with the, align with the principle, it's not gonna work. 
And if you do align with the principle, it is going to work. Likewise, it doesn't care if you're a saint or a sinner. If you understand the laws of aerodynamics and how to fly a plane, it's going to fly. If you don't know how to fly it, it's going to fly if you're a sinner. If you're a terrible person, according to the world, but you know the principles of aerodynamics. Or it's going to crash if you're one of the greatest people, but you have no idea the principles of aerodynamics. You stick your finger in a light socket, in other words, live not according to the principle of electroconductivity, you're going to get electrocuted whether you're a good person or a saint. And if you're a sinner or quote unquote bad person and you wire your stuff wrong, it's going to catch your house on fire or not give you electricity. Life is principle. It's not personal. That doesn't mean there's not a rich personalness to life and to your relationship with life or God or each other. But you can't live merely according to what you feel. You can't live merely according to what you believe, to what you think, to what you think is right or wrong. In fact, the belief in right and wrong is at the root of all suffering. There is no right or wrong. There's the truth and there's that which is not true. Two plus two equals four. Is that right? Is that good? No, it's just true. Two plus, and if you know that principle and you operate according to that, you get beneficial results. If you think two plus two equals five, or, or two plus two equals three, and you're constantly giving four for three, you suffer the consequences of being out of alignment with the principle. Is that evil? No, it's just not true. And at the root of all successful living, there's either a more realization and operation of truth principle, or there's less a realization or operation of truth principle. There's either the truth or there's a lie, right? And so I just want to encourage you as, in, and, and by the way, for those of you that are thought leaders, change makers, influencers, or wanna be, come check out my free Facebook group, Thought Leader Academy. Just look up Thought Leader Academy, not Thought Leader Academy Mastermind, that's a private group, but Thought Leader Academy, and join for free. I'm gonna be doing additional trainings there and all kinds of fun stuff to support you in discovering what is your life's work, what is your life's message, what are you here to bring and how are you here to serve? So you can catch this most important wave in history where people are hungering for individuals like you, bringing your gifts, making your difference, really what you're made of and made for. So go to Thought Leader Academy, check that out. But I just wanna really make sure I drive this point home. Life isn't personal and life isn't fair. It's principle. And it will not just happen. It will happen just, meaning by the proper understanding and application of universal laws or principles. Now, once you understand the principles, you can begin to engineer a way of life. <clears throat> and that's what we are endeavoring to do in this country, United States, and around the world is struct, construct socially engineered structures of how to live as individuals, how to live together, how to do business, how to raise families, how to be in love. We're trying to build a society and that's a, a wonderful endeavor, but we just want to remember the only way to build a successful society, a successful individual life, relationship, business, whatever, is, living, is building it based on principles not based on intent, not based on some kind of, of idea or belief merely, not based on an emotional desire. It doesn't matter what you desire or what you think should or shouldn't be or how you feel in the, in the ultimate sense of things. What matters is, is this an accurate, true principle? And when I live according to it, internet connection it's kind of go it's kind of wonky right now i think there's some storms going on but but fundamentally and especially now what's creating so much insanity is there's very little real conversation and understanding that 
The only way to produce a world that works for all is to get back to first principles. And if you want to be a change maker, a thought leader, a visionary, an influencer in any area, or just in your own life or raising your children, become a student of truth and truth principles. Build your life on the bedrock of principles that do not change with times and trends. That's where you build real wisdom, real success, real sustainability, and ultimately true fulfillment for you and for all that you touch. So I hope this serves you. Comment, let me know what you think about this. If you agree, disagree, share this with people that you see are getting caught up in all the drama and trauma and craziness and the contagion of emotion and belief. And see if we can get a few more people to understand that successful living comes by living based on principles, not based on opinion or emotion merely. And until next time, remember to live authentically, love unconditionally. These are principles. Live authentically, love unconditionally, and follow your destiny. Take care.